I don't think so. We have gathered, and I gotta tell you, it is awesome not just seeing people here, but I see people that I know, people that I care for, and it is so awesome that we get to be together. And yet, we are not gathering just to encourage one another. That is one of the purposes of Christian worship. But that is not the only reason. The main reason is to worship, to listen to what God says, and to respond. And we're going to do that today. For those of you who are sitting in the sun, um, don't worry. I have tried to make sure that worship is relatively short, so none of you get terribly sunburned. Hopefully, we'll find out. <laughs> um, but we're going to get started. We're going to begin by singing the first three verses of In Christ Alone. Let's sing. Maybe. There should be music coming. <laughs> there should be music coming. You guys got the music up there? There we go. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. Was laid here in the death of Christ, I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have come into the presence of God. He created us to love him and to serve him as his own dear children. But we have disobeyed him, and we deserve only his wrath and his punishment. Therefore, let's confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven. I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. 
you are his own dear child. Now, may God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. And the peace of forgiveness, let's praise the Lord. No fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no skin of man, and never of me from his hand till he returns. Here in the power of Christ, no sin. Let's pray. Lord, it is so good to gather again as your people whether online or in person, to be able to see each other and rejoice with each other. Bless this time of worship. Use it to draw us closer to you and to rejoice in what you have done for us. In your name, amen. So in the church year, today is a special day. It is called Trinity Sunday. A special Sunday where we focus on that truth that our God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're not going to be really, really, really focusing on that today because it's our first time back together. Uh, usually, for instance, on Trinity Sunday, we use the Athanasian Creed. That is everyone's favorite. Maybe some of you remember it. It's like 10 pages long. Okay, it's only two pages long, but uh, we are not going to use that today since that's, this is the first time we're together. But uh, our gospel for today, Jesus tells us about the Trinity. He says the Trinity has one name, but three persons. And we start getting into that confusing, confusing thing of what the Trinity is. But in the end, God says, don't worry, I'm with you. Our gospel is from Matthew chapter 28. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is God's gospel. We're going to continue with a hymn. Uh, our first hymn was one that we've sung many times here before, and I'm guessing was familiar for most of us. This next hymn is one that we've never sung here before. So we got some uh, some good contrast here. This hymn is one that's got a tune that I think you'll be able to catch on catch up on very quickly. But the hymn focuses on the three persons of the Trinity and how we can praise them and why we praise them. So let's join together in singing "Voices Raised to You We Offer." Mm -hmm. Oh. 
It says it is time for a children's devotion. Usually, if we were inside the church and, you know, we didn't have this pandemic thing, we'd have all the kids gather up in front by me. We are not doing that today. Uh, kids, stay where you're at and just listen up. This is the children's devotion. I have a friend who uh, I've known for a little bit now. I've been to his house many times. We've watched the movies together. And uh, he has got the friendliest dog you will ever meet. Her name is Zoe. Um, he's actually the first person, the first member of Amazing Grace that I ever met in person. Uh, his name is Dave. And Dave is supposed to be out here right now. Dave. <laughs> Dave and I arrange this ahead of time, so this is not a surprise. Dave is helping out with the music up there. Uh, he and Barb are working very hard for that, so thank you. Um, Dave has a really cool job, and I just wanted to, him to tell you just a little bit about what he does. Well, I work for a company that uh, we manufacture uh, analyzers that monitor the emissions coming out of smokestacks, and some of those emissions would be NOx, SO2, CO, CO2, uh, O2, uh, opacity, and that's basically it. Thanks, Dave. So you, you all got that, right? Kids, you understand? Got, neither do I. I. I asked Dave to tell me a little bit about his job, and I went, what? I had no clue what most of that meant. And yet, even though I don't understand Dave's job, do you think I can still go to his house and watch a movie and enjoy some time with him? Well, yeah, of course. Even though I don't understand everything Dave understands, I can trust him as a friend, and that's pretty cool. That's kind of like God. There's a lot about God that I don't understand. There's this Trinity thing that is just weird. There's one God. God the Father created everything, and he is God. Jesus died on the cross, and he is God. The Holy Spirit creates faith in our hearts, and he is God. But you know that God the Father isn't Jesus. Jesus isn't the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit isn't the Father. But there are three gods, but there's one God. What? And I don't understand that, and that's okay. Because God does not tell us we have to understand him. He just says, trust me. And it's okay to trust him because he loves you so much he died for you. Even when you were terrible, God still said, I love you. And I come and I rescue you. And so it's okay if you don't understand God, just like I don't understand my friend Dave. But we can trust him. We usually close off our children's devotions with prayer, and so let's do that now. Let's pray. Lord, you are so big, we do not understand you. 
and yet you have created trust in our hearts, and for that we thank you. Help us continue to trust you, even when we don't understand. In your name, amen. All right, so we're, we're going to move into the, the adult portion of the day. And uh, to do that, to begin with, I need to make a little bit of a confession to you. And it's something that I think a lot of you are really going to identify with. I'm exhausted. I am so tired right now. Some of you might think that, uh, that being pastor, most of the stuff I do is out visiting people, and that's true. But as this pandemic has happened and I've not been visiting people, I'm still working my tail off, and I am just tired. And like I said, my guess is that a lot of you can really identify with that. So much has changed. I look around and I see people wearing masks. If you'd come in three months ago like this into church, I'd wonder what the gag was. But what, why are you pulling this joke on me? And now this is just reality. For many of you, when you go into work, work is so different now. You got to get, you, you gotta get uh, your temperature taken. You have to prove that you're not sick. Life is different now, and it's not like it was easier before this, you know? I, many of us were running ragged even before any of this hit. And it is exhausting. And it is so easy in this kind of climate to look at church, to look at Jesus and say, this is just one more thing we got to do. Some of you were here yesterday and earlier this week cleaning up, particularly in back here. Uh, the Spitzers were really involved in making sure that you had sound for today, for which I am very appreciative. Thank you to the Spitzers, the Chromies, the Radings, and to, to the Homs. Uh, you came in and you did so much. Thank you. Uh, my kids as well. Thank you. So much to do. What I want to do today is talk about the last few verses from the book of 2 Corinthians. When you think about books of the Bible, often enough, you can sum up the entire book of the Bible with one word. Uh, the book of Philippians, you can think of the word joy. Uh, the book of Colossians, you can think of the word enough. When you think of the books of Corinthians, both 1 and 2 Corinthians, you can sum that up with the word problems. The Corinthians were a bunch of knuckleheads. They had done a bunch of stuff. They'd, they'd gone off the deep end in many ways. And so Paul wrote two letters to them, First and Second Corinthians. And he deals with their problems there. And when you get to the end of a letter like that, where you're dealing with a bunch of knuckleheads, you usually say, okay, guys, clean up the mess. I'm going to come visit you. And I really don't want to have to deal with it, all right? Maybe you've done that with your kids, if you've got kids. When you're leaving the house, the last thing you say is, and the house better not be a smoking crater when I get back. That's how we deal with stuff when we, people say, when we say goodbye, right? We say the most important thing. And you might think that for Paul, the most important thing would be fix this. But that's not what he says. Let me read here the, uh, the last few verses from Corinthians. Maybe I'm going to read it out of my, my phone, just because I don't know how to balance this with the mic. If the phone turns back on. There we go. Finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So Paul wraps up his book and he says, and here's the clue, aim for perfection. Oh, thanks. That's what I wanted to hear, right? I'm already exhausted. I'm trying my hardest. I'm trying my best. Now Paul says, yeah, that ain't good enough. Don't do your best. Don't try harder. Just aim for perfection. That's all it takes. Just perfection. And I don't know about you, but when I hear stuff like that, if I am working my butt off and someone says that ain't good enough, you know what I do? I give up. I am done. 
And it is really tempting to do that here. It's really tempting to look at this and think of, say, what Jesus says is Matthew chapter 6. Jesus says, be perfect like your heavenly father is perfect. And it is so easy to despair there. But I hate to tell you this, but uh, this is one of those times where the NIV, I have no clue where they got this translation for that word. This word in 2 Corinthians is not aimed for perfection. Uh, Greek has action words that are active and passive. If you are active, you are the one doing it. For instance, I toss the stone. I'm the one doing it. If you're passive, it's being done to you. The stone is tossed by me. Pretty straightforward, right? Either you're the one doing it or it's being done to you. And here, the word in the original Greek is passive. It's not aimed for perfection. It's you have been made perfect. You have been made sufficient. You have been made enough. In other words, when Paul's wrapping up this book here, he's not saying you got to do something. He's saying it has been done to you already. That's what he's saying. Now notice that means that you don't do it. You have nothing to do with being made perfect. You have nothing to do with being made enough. You have nothing to do with being made sufficient. It has been done for you. There's only one person in the history of the world that was perfect. The book of Hebrews says that Jesus was tempted in every way, just as we are, and yet he never sinned. In other words, whatever temptations you face, you are not alone. Jesus knows what those temptations are, and he says, I've been there. Except he never fell for it. But when he died on the cross, 2 Corinthians, the same book that we're reading from, says... God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In other words, he did it for you. It's done. You're enough. God's to-do list is complete. God gave you a list of 10 things to do. Real simple, right? You shall have no other gods. Don't misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not, do not uh, bear false testimony. Do not covet. And God looked at your to-do list and saw that you didn't do any of it. And then Jesus said, oh yeah, I did it. Here, check, 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 check. Here, you can have my list. And that's what he did. You are enough. He says, you are enough. You have been made enough. You are passive there. And, and the God of peace and the God of love, he is with you. doesn't say that he's going to be with you. If you try hard, he's going to be with you to behave. No, he's already on your side. He is with you right now. Not just in the parking lot. Not just online at home. Not just when you're thinking about him. He's with you in the car. He's with you when you're doing your online learning. He's with you. When you're at work, it's with you. It's on your side. Then it says, live at peace. Now, we're going to dig into this a lot more next week. So I'm going to give just a little bit here about the living at peace. But if we remember that we're passive, that we've been made enough, it means we're all equal. I can't look at you and say, dude, come on, get it together. I'm so much better than you. You can be like me. No. I can look at you and say, hey, we're the same. We're sinners that are forgiven. And if we are sinners that are forgiven, we are the same. We are forgiven. I can live at peace with you. Again, we're going to talk a lot more about that next week. So come back next week or be online next week. And then it says, greet each other with a kiss of peace. Well, Dave, I've known you longest. <laughs> No, not so much. <laughs> so we are really, really not going to do that today, especially in the era of, of uh, social distancing. And before you think that I'm trying to take something out of God's word, 
when he says greet each other with a kiss of peace, that's just how you greeted one another, particularly if you loved and respected them. If you met someone that you loved and respect, you'd kiss each other on the cheek. That's just how you greet each other. And so the point isn't, okay, everyone, let's start making out. That is not the point. If, that, if you think that's the point, um, don't try it with me. The point is to greet each other with love and respect because we are all equals because we are all passive, because God has done it for us. So again, you see here at the end, the main point that Paul's making is not do more. It's, it has been done. And then the very end, the last verse, I'm hoping sounds familiar to most of you, says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We use that as the blessings at the end of church sometimes. In fact, if I'd been on top of things, I would have written that in as a blessing that we're ending with today, but I didn't because I'm a genius. But, but think about what that blessing says. The grace of Jesus. That Jesus does not give you what you earn, but gives you the opposite. Instead of giving you hell, he gives you heaven. Instead of condemnation, he gives you freedom and forgiveness. Instead of eternal death, he gives you eternal life. Instead of being forever alone, he says, you are a member of my family forever. That's grace. And it says, the love of God the Father. That God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son for you. That God loved you so much that not only did he give you his son, but he said, yeah, you know what? I'm going to give you a great day today. Here, have some good weather. And he gave us good weather. And he gave us all these different kinds of food and friendships, and I don't know about you, but animals, what a blessing to have pets. He gives us those blessings as well. All of creation, a blessing for us. And then the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, that it's not enough that God gives you his son. It's not enough that he gives you his grace. Now he says, now you're in fellowship with me. The Holy Spirit goes out and he finds you, goes, look what I found. And he picks you up and he brings you back to the Trinity and says, look who I found. And the Father and the Son say, that's awesome. You get to be with me forever. And all of that is given to you. Paul could have ended his letter by going, you knuckleheads behave. But that's not what he does. He says, you have been made enough. You have been made sufficient. God's grace is with you. And I really hope that that's what you get when you come to worship. It's a lot in the Bible. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff in the next few weeks, and it's going to be awesome. But I hope the main thing you always walk away with is this. You are forgiven sinners. That God has made you his children. That he has made you enough. Amen. Now, we're going to continue with a confession. This is something that we share. Every Christian church on earth actually shares. Even if they don't say this confession, Every Christian church on earth believes this. Otherwise, they're not Christian. And so let's say this thing that unites us across generations, across denominations, across ages and nations. Let's speak the Apostles' Creed. Now i got to open up my phone again. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to continue with prayer now. And we're going to do things just a little bit differently than the last time we were in the building. Um, for those of you who are able to join us Sunday mornings, one of the things I would always end Sunday morning on digital worship was asking for prayer requests. There was anything that people wanted to pray for. 
And I found that that was really encouraging for each other as we got to lift each other up in prayer and people would bring forward things that maybe they wouldn't have thought of beforehand. And so we're going to continue that at least for right now. And so I'm going to ask if you have any prayer requests, if you are online, the chat window is open right now, go ahead and type any prayer requests that you have there as well. Do any of you have any prayer requests? I know it's a little bit more intimidating when you've got everyone here instead of just the uh, four, five, six families at a time that we had online, huh? Yeah, Tom. Awesome. I, I think that is great prayer to use here. We're going to pray for our nation and for our world, uh, for both uh, the pandemic, uh, not to support the pandemic, but praying about the pandemic, and praying for the racial strife and the riots going on right now. Thank you, Tom. Great prayer. Anything else that we, any other requests? All right, let's pray. Triune God, you have done it for us. You have made us your own. You are active. Father, you created us. Jesus, you redeemed us. Spirit, you have called us to be your own. And for that, we praise and thank you. You've given us so many good things. And yet, because of sin, we live in a broken world. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering through disease, any disease. Uh, today is, is Cancer Survivors Day, and so we pray for those who have survived cancer. Fill them with thanksgiving. We pray for those who are going through cancer right now. We pray especially for those who are suffering from COVID, whether it's a person themselves or someone they love. We pray for those who are mourning as well. Love and encourage them, Lord. Open our eyes and open our arms and our hearts to reach out for those who are suffering. We pray also for our nation that, that is undergoing so much hardship right now. Lord, heal racial divides. Help us reach out to those around us. We also pray that you send protection for those who are there to protect us. Give them wisdom. Be with our leaders. Lord, protect those who are suffering from riots as well. For those who are protesting, give them wisdom to speak in love and in truth. Lord, hear us as we bring you our private prayers. Now, Lord, fill us with your grace. Move us to live that life that you've given us so that we reflect that grace to others. We pray all this in your name. Amen. I invite you to join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's conclude with our last song. We get to sing that blessing from Corinthians now. And this is a song that we've sung several times here, so belt it out. Let's sing.
Christ, the risen Son, and the fellowship of God the Spirit, keep our hearts and minds within His love, and to live in His grace for His glorious praise. From the depths of earth to the hearts of God, we declare the name of the Lamb once slain, Christ eternal, the King of kings. Understanding and this grace which makes us what we are, and this fellowship of this communion make us one in spirit and in heart, and to him be praised for his glorious name. From the depths of earth to the heights of man, we declare the name of the Lamb once slain, Christ eternal, the King of kings. Once more, good morning. Thank you all for joining us both in person and online. This is awesome. It is so good to see you. Um, according to the state of Kentucky, we are not yet at the phase that we can have Bible study or Sunday school. So this is it for corporate activities this morning. But feel free to greet one another. Uh, for safety's sake, uh, do please uh, keep that social distancing. We don't want to have anyone pick anything up. And if anyone wants to help clean up and put stuff away, I don't think anyone would fight. Um, I do want to say one more, once more, a public thank you to the Spitzers for doing the sound this morning. Thank you. And Dave, thank you for being put on the spot. I appreciate it. Um, thank you to uh, Tom and Nate and Nora and Carrie and um, both the Spitzers and the Chromies as well for helping clean up back here. Uh, and Everett, thank you. Yes. Um, Thank you so much for helping clean up back here. Uh, and once again, thank you all for joining. Um, you all got the PDF, and if you didn't, um, you all have the hard copy. You know, there's announcements back there. You can look at that as you wish. Otherwise, that will be with you till we meet. Oh, I missed an announcement. Oh, thank you, Tom. Um, we cannot pass an offering plate right now because of the pandemic. Many of you have switched to electronic giving. If you have not and you have an offering to give, we've got the offering plate sitting right up here. Go ahead, you can drop something right here in the chair. Right here. Um, set aside in a little a little shelter. So hopefully Breeze doesn't pick anything up and blow it off. But if you have uh, an offering, a physical yeah, offering, right. you can right. drop it there at your right. leisure uh, as we clean up here. Thank you again so much. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Good morning, Luke.